Hi everybody, this is Kimberly from Starfish Design Embroidery Group. Uh, trying a different camera angle today and see if I can make sure to get everything in because when I was playing back the other video I did, I couldn't see my hands all the time. So, um, just trying this again. Sorry, I'm moving you around a little bit. Let's see, my hand's right here, you can see, so I need to make sure I keep everything over there. Okay, I think we're good. So, um, also I couldn't figure out how to trim it. So I'm sorry I'm gonna bore you with the, the stitch out. So I'm doing a smaller bag. Um, what are we making today? We are stitching out um, buttons. Here's the little um, six and a half by or eight and a half by six. Here's a little coin pouch, which is five and a quarter by three and a quarter. This also works for the American Girl doll. I'm sorry, shouldn't be saying American Girl. It works for the 18 inch model doll. And I forgot to cut my fabric in advance, so I apologize. I need to cut that real quick. Else you're going to be like, what? 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 What's going on here? Um, I found this great. I'm telling you, sometimes those de-stash groups on Facebook are amazing. But I felt found this great stuff, and I apologize. It's not um, going to be, it's going to be wrinkled a little bit, but you guys can ex accept that. Um, but this stuff is really pretty, and um, she was selling fat quarters for a dollar each. I mean, come on. And she must have a quilt shop, because they all have a little label on them. And I was like, okay, I'll take a fat quarter. These work great for my lining on my bags. And I like the smaller cuts because it's easier to cut them up. But I didn't go up and wrinkle this or iron this. It's President's Day today. And I had to take the morning off because my son has no school today. and couldn't find anywhere to do with him. But I actually have a lot of projects, so I have to work this afternoon and make sure that all my projects, I have to do changes for my project, I should say. And I have to make sure I can get all the necessary approvals so I have afternoon meetings. Anyway, long and boring, you don't care about all that. But I'm wasting time here as I cut this fabric real quick. So, um, I got the vinyl ready. So I got the zipper ready, got my tape. <coughs> if you're new to my channel, welcome. Um, I hope that you find me educational, and I'm not a humorous person, but I do jibber-jabber and try to kill the dead air time. Um, one of these days, I'll figure out how to get the videos edited so that you don't have to watch all the quilting parts or the stitch outs. So what I'm doing is I'm tacking this down at the end, um, and I hope I have it lined up well. I make all my patterns, I usually give you three lines for the zipper. In this case, the top line is part of the bag. But some of the patterns, I only have two, so I can take as much room of the hoop as the stitch area as possible. Your hoop is always larger than your stitch area, of course. So what I like to do is I like to find the center of the zipper. And you can see that, right? Oops. Lord have mercy, Kimberly, I forgot to turn the light on. Okay, so the center of the zipper, and then I line that up with my center placement line. And I do what I call walking the zipper down that line, and I put a piece of tape as I go along, and that way I know the center is center is straight. I'm sorry, the right side is right, right side is zipper. And then I can just put the tape down on the left side. I'm not about to have my fingers inside the embroidery area while that needle is moving, so I am a tape girl. I use a lot of tape. Um, I'm using this one half inch transport tape. I like that for taping down the zipper because it's less wide, and I found I was just cutting the um, one inch tape in half anyway, so I finally just found that they had one and a half inch or one half inch rolls. So I ordered some of those. 
and I'll be using that all day today because <clears throat> I cannot find my one inch roll. I think I ran out. Okay, and I like to try and do this against a firm surface too. That helps to keep the zipper from going wavy. I am using zipper by the yard, um, often called zipper tape as well, from camsnaps.com. She has some really great um, poles and she has a rainbow tape and this is all three inch, or I'm sorry, number three. <clears throat> and it refers to the width of the, the zipper tape. Now my bag, I have been designing the most recent bags so that they will work with um, a number three and a number five zipper. So if you have some number five zipper, it should work with this. Uh, always, you know, keep an eye on the needle when you're stitching. Make sure that you have enough room because not all tape is equal. Even if it's labeled a number five, um, does not work. Do not use resin tape. Um, resin, I don't have any sitting here to show you but resin tapes are where the zipper teeth are kind of like chunkier. Um, they usually refer to them as resin and there's a lot of cute um, resin tapes out there right now that have really cute little shapes um, for the teeth. Do not try that on a single needle machine. I mean, you can, I'm not your boss, but if you do, you can probably be almost guaranteed that you're gonna break a needle on it when the needle goes over it. And when you break a needle on your machine, as my friend unfortunately found out, um, the needle got stuck in her bobbin case, so she had to get a new bobbin case because it broke it. But then she realized after the fact, not only did it break her new bobbin case, it put her machine out of time. So she had about a hundred and, she had to buy two. She ended up buying another bobbin case and breaking it before she realized it was the timing. So she had about a $140 repair because of that, because she um, got too close to the D-ring. Now, I, I mean, I try to make sure my patterns are um, work from all machines, but you have to know your machine best yourself. Okay, sorry, I was just taking some tape off there. Today I am using, um, let's go ahead before we put the foam on, let's put the lining on the back. So for the lining, we're gonna go ahead and the reference point is always gonna be your placement line. Let me get this neat, this purple thing out so it's easier to see. This is the um, bottom zipper placement line. This is the top zipper placement line. And you can see the white thread. If you're using a one, um, a number five zipper, your zipper's gonna come out to here um, because it's a, a wider tape. And if you cut your pieces too narrow, you might not have enough. Now, I do try to make the cutting instructions generous, but still. <clears throat> so, and I'm actually just totally winging this. So my material is probably looking a little bit wider <coughs> because you just saw me cut it. I didn't use a cutting mat or anything. I just kind of rough cut it. And that works. Obviously it worked for me. So if you don't have a roller cutter or you like to just like wing it, it's fine. Just make sure you leave at least about an inch on either side because see this bows out so you need to make sure you have enough room so we're going to go ahead and put that down now my machine i um i have a genomi so i actually do save all my files in genomi orientation because genomi has to have the file in portrait mode even if i'm using the largest scoop which it would fit going that way going landscape the machine won't recognize it. You have to have it in portrait mode. Don't ask me why. It's very irritating. It's it's kind of unbelievable. Okay, we're not ready for the foam yet. What am I doing, Kimberly? Okay, and then we'll get our vinyl. And we're using this really pretty cream patent from My Punk Broidery. Um, I have a couple vinyl manufacturers I buy from. Uh, they're not really manufacturers, but you know what I mean, Set vendors. My Punk Broidery is number one. She has um, amazing stuff. And she tests everything for durability. Everything gets washed in the washing machine and dryer to make sure um, it's washable and dryable. And that way she doesn't have to worry about going in and editing each listing and say, oh, you know, this vinyl what didn't isn't okay. She just rejects those vinyls and she doesn't stock them. Um, so I love that. And she's sweet as can be. Okay, so I got this taped down. 
I'm going to run the tack down stitch. And this is just going to tack our vinyl down to our zipper. <clears throat> oh, I forgot to mention I'm using poly mesh, um, poly mesh stabilizer. But it's not fusible. It's just regular poly mesh. And you see I didn't line that up well because um, my um, it's wider down here. But that's okay. <clears throat> Normally I'm in another bag... Or if you're not, um, if you're using a standard bag, um, you would fold the lining over in the back right now. But on the quilted series, you're not going to do that. This is number two in the quilted se series. Queen of Hearts was the first one. I got a really good response from that. So what we're going to do is add our padding now. You don't have to. You can totally do this, especially if you use a thicker vinyl. Like Fluidity has a real thick nap in it. You don't really need to use any padding, but I'm using, this is headliner foam. So I've used headliner foam before and I have used, of course I lost a scrap of it now. Oh, here it is. Um, I've used, um, this is dish foam. It's called dish foam. I actually bought it to make a wallet with that I haven't made yet. And you can see the difference. This one I used the dish foam on and it compressed it down really well. This I used the headliner on. This is actually ended up staying much more firm than the dish foam did. So I got this from Amazon. I got a huge package of it for pretty cheap because it's meant for moving. Um, this you can get at um, Joann's. And I'm not really sure what the difference is because there's a knit side and there's a foamy side. I just use the knit side not, um, facing up. So now if your vinyl is really thick and you're using foaming, you could actually just butt this up against your seam but I'm not going to do that. I found when I folded down, it created a little bit of a ridge. <clears throat> so what I'm doing, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm so sorry. I'm actually taping mine up uh, halfway between that line. And I'm going to go ahead and rough trim this around my outline because I don't want this in my seam allowance. And if you fold this over, it does make a little bit of a crease line that you can follow. So the, the instructions I give you um, make this a generous cut so that you can go ahead and fussy cut it down. And then you can always trim it out of your seam allowance afterwards. But with the curved edges, it's kind of hard to, to estimate without just making it a little larger. So I'm going to put uh, just a little bit of tape down to hold this down. It doesn't need a lot because we're gonna basically, we're gonna um, hold it in with the vinyl when we fold the vinyl down. So again, I'm putting that about halfway. So it's covering the vinyl on the bottom and halfway between. And actually I don't think, it, whoa, whoa, sorry guys. Oh, my embroidery table here just moved. I moved you out of the way. I'm so sorry about that. Okay, I think I must have leaned on it. Okay, back where here we are. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold my vinyl now this point is really important and I cut it this way too big. You want to make sure that your vinyl is taped down really tautly. So I'm going to trim a piece of this off because I cut it way too big and I'm not going to be able to trim it. Because um, the quilting is going to compress down that foam but I don't want my vinyl to bunch up when it's doing that. So I'm pulling it really tautly and I'm going to tape it I still got it too wide. That's okay, I'll tape it right to the hoop. And I'm doing the same thing at the corners. So I'm pulling this as tautly as I can so that I don't have a big bulge. If you don't pull it tautly, then the vinyl is gonna push against here. When it starts to do the quilting, it's gonna push. And then before you know it, you're gonna have vinyl sticking by your teeth and your teeth are not gonna work well. Your, I'm sorry, your teeth, your um, presser foot, your zipper pole. Goodness, Kimberly, your zipper pole is not going to work well. Maybe I should not have done this today, but there's people waiting for me to release this file. And I want to make sure I have a video because I added a new feature to this series that I will be showing you about. And that is not in... The previous video so this video 
will be the video for the entire quilted series. Every quilted bag in the quilted series, I'm officially calling it the quilted motif series, will be the same except for the shape of the bag and the quilting and motif on it. Otherwise, it will be exactly the same. Okay, I have that taped down. Make sure your lining is still pulled up out of the way. Hold on to your tail so it doesn't make a knotted mess. And go ahead and start the quilting. And this is going to take a couple minutes. So I'm sorry if I can't figure out how to edit this out. You're going to be watching it. done so now you have a choice um if i was able to edit the quilting out let me add i didn't forget to mention something before i started the quilting if you are not using batting oh this got bumped up that's okay if you're not using batting this is very intense stitching here make sure you add um some extra stabilizer on the bottom and this looks like my tension's not very good. You should be able to see the white of my bobbin under there. So I might need a monkey with this. So I'm going to go ahead and fold the lining down. Uh, unfold that little curve there I got. And I'm going to um, I'm going to finger crease this 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 lining here so that it's nice and firm. If you are like in a sewing studio where you have your iron handy you can just go ahead and lightly um finger crease it and then iron it from the other side and i need to trim off this excess fabric here because again i just kind of randomly cut this real quick um if you need if you're using a bigger bag and your fabric is going to run into your hoop attachment where mine is then you just want to fold this up and tape it out of the way um while you're doing this so I'm going to tape this piece here. Okay. And then when you um, get to the front side, you can go ahead and remove all this extra tape now. So you don't forget and have it get caught in your seam later. We don't need this tape anymore. So you have a choice right here. Um, this um, stitching is pretty straight. When I did my first series, it didn't end up as straight just because the motion, the, the direction and everything. So you can actually skip right now if you want to and just leave this top stitching. But I added a decorative stitch. And the other thing is if you don't want to see the decorative stitch on this side, then leave the lining folded up. And I'll show you what that looks like so you can make a choice. If you look here on the back of the inside, that's what the decorative stitching looks like. I'm okay with that. I'm, I want the decorative stitching to just add a little bit more character to the bag. Um, but by all means, you can skip it. It's a different color stop for that purpose. I try to make my bags so that you can customize them to work for you. Now we're adding, ready to run the steps for our wristlet strap. So I'm gonna go ahead and run um, color stop seven. And we're not adding our lining yet, we're just running the straps, the steps for our wristlet straps. And I actually need to cut my vinyl for that because I didn't do that yet. 
you'll see there's going to be on all the bags except the four by four there's a um two stitches on the side of the bag and two stitches on the top of the bag and i did do this with contrasting thread this time so that you can see it better and just did what I want to be able to highlight to you which is why I'm doing a new series for the changes that I made let me just trim this off real quick um, I'm just gonna I'm just scoring this with my seam ripper because I need it to be three quarters inch so when you're doing your vinyl, if you're using vinyl, even if you're using material, cotton, you need to make sure that your D-ring strap connectors are not too um, thick because this is, this is thicker vinyl. It's got a little bit of a nap to the back. So if I fold this over, like if I do a traditional strap where you fold it to the inside, let's just do this like fold it to the inside, and then you fold it like this, your D-ring goes in here, you have, um, or I'm sorry, this would be, it. then your D-ring would go in, you'd have eight layers of fabric. Even on a sewing machine, that's difficult. So what I like to do is a modified version where you just have your strap like this, fold the long edges into the side, and then fold it in your D-ring. But that's still four layers of material, and not all machines can get through that. So if you don't think your machine can, or you don't know for sure, then just do a single layer. If you're using really thin vinyl, then you can um, attach a piece of um, gross grain ribbon to the back, um, just layer it together. Um, that gives in case the vinyl wears out, or you can use, I like to just put a piece of Decoville light on it and I fuse it to the back of the vinyl and that gives added stability to it. Oh, that's weird, my thread didn't cut. Okay, so there's my pointing thing. You have, and this is why I use contrasting thread. There's one here, one here, and then uh, one here, and one here. But this here, um, the registration mark, is what I wanted to show you. I added this to the back and to the front so that you can line up your backing. So, I'm going to use just this one ribbon over here, the steering ring connector, and I'm going to place it. Um, you need to make sure you have enough room for your presser foot. So if you have a wider presser foot, you need to place it um, farther away from that D-ring strap placement. So I'm going to place mine about right there. I know that'll work for mine. And I'm going to go ahead and tape that down. I'm just using one today so i'm actually going to fast forward my machine so i don't need to waste all that thread and skip all the way over to that side now you may not be able to do that with your machine if you can't then just stitch the thread let it go ahead and stitch all the positions on my machine i have to be careful because my um this thing moves all the way around and it could get um Oops, that's a little too close for my liking. Did you see that when you when I put it down? Could you see that how close it is? There's not that much space in here. I can barely fit this in here. That's just too close for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that D-ring strap away a little bit farther. Position it a little bit farther away. better and you know audition it like that oh yeah that's much better now I have a lot more room that presser foot's not going to get stuck and this is just going to tack it down and I didn't obviously didn't line mine up right because the tack down didn't get it all but that's okay because um it'll get caught in the final stitch this is really just to have it tacked down the stitch that's going to hold it in place is on the final stitch. I'm going to trim away my seam extras here. I know I'm probably getting all out of the frame again. I'm sorry about that. All right, so now we're ready to go ahead and add our 
um, backing and our back lining. So I'm going to do the lining first because that's easier. So the lining, just like we did on the um, for the bottom lining, we're going to go ahead and line it up with the top of the um, zipper. And I'm going to trim off that extra little bit there. I know I'm off camera, you don't need to see this point. Okay, there we go. So I'm gonna tape that down. Try to reuse this tape as often as, as much as I can. Now you might wanna tape it down here at the bottom too, but I know I can just flip mine over and it's okay. It's not gonna come loose because I'm flat on my bed. So. Um, I'm okay there. All right, so now here's the tricky part. So oh, actually I'm gonna tape it down because I'm gonna show you how to line up the, the top. So this is gonna flop around while I'm doing that. So I'm gonna tape it down a little bit more. You're gonna need a couple of straight pins. What is that? And two or three. I like the kind that have the flower head if you have them because they um, will drop down into your material and stay straight up. Okay, so I have these flower head pins. So I have not trimmed my backing. I'm going to take the first pin and I'm gonna drop it in the bottom. See, this is the bottom corners and then the middle. I'm gonna drop it in the bottom corner there on through the back, all right? Then I'm gonna bring my hoop up here I'm gonna find the bottom corner there, and I'm gonna drop the pin through that. Okay, you see that? And now, and I am gonna to have to go off camera in a second here because my table is off the bed because the needles will push up. So there we go, we got the first one. I'm gonna do the same thing with the other one. So I'm pushing it through the the bottom, I'm gonna go off the table so I can push it through. That way the pin is hanging over the side of the, the table here. So I pushed it through there and I'm gonna rotate it and then push it through to that side there, right there, and push it through. And now, if both of them are pushed flat down and they're hanging perpendicular, you see the little pins at the bottom are hanging off can you see that in the camera? I can't tell if you can tell. I think you can see it. Then I know that this is straight, perfectly straight here. So if you let the pins hang off the side of your table, which I'm doing, but you can't see, because if you put it flat on the table, then they're gonna bump up. Then you can go ahead and tape your exterior down. And I'm gonna just, run the tape, um, you're gonna have using thicker tape than I am. So you're gonna run it all the way across thick pieces. And you do have to, we are gonna pull this up a little bit to do our, our final seam to move our zipper. But for right now, we want this down really tight. So add a lot of tape to hold it down. And again, it's better if you're using like the wider painter's tape or if you're using the transport use the um, one inch. This is not working as well because it's too thin, but it's okay, I'll make do. We have not moved our zipper pull yet. Our zipper is still closed because we don't want to be contending with that zipper pull trying to stitch across the top of our bag. That zipper um, pull will get in the way and your needle might hit it and break. So we don't want that. So I would always need to pay attention to where our hardware is at in our bag. Okay, I'm happy with this. So now that I have it all taped down, I can pull my pins out. And I know that this is lined up. Now the sides are not gonna be, um, they're not gonna line up perfectly well. Okay, now we're gonna run step nine. Um, because it, it, the, in order to get the grid mark to line up, it would be um, such a, an ordeal 
and it would take me much longer and you the user would need to do it it was just it's a nightmare so one thing i want to show here this the top stitching is the top of the bag stitching is in two color stops for a reason if you prefer to have a top stitching on the back of your bag so that it pulls the lining down and keeps the lining straight down you can go ahead and pull this up fold the exterior up now tape it out of the way and run the next step I find you can see for yourself I have enough space here I don't find that's necessary so I'm not going to do the top stitch um, the other thing is if you choose to do the top stitch method realize that it actually crimps your bag a little bit and your final bag will look more like that um, so I find that I have digitized mine enough that I don't I have enough space that I don't really need to worry about that. So I'm just going to run this. You need two stitches to help reinforce that zipper though. So um, that's the way I do it and I think it looks fine this way. If, if you um, are worried that this is going to pull up, what you can do is put some permanent double stick tape on the back of the lining and then after you um, turn the bag inside out reach up release the paper off of it and then press this down you can do that if you prefer okay now we need to move the zipper stop and we need to fold the, the lining out of the way because we don't want to get this caught we're going to be doing the first of our exterior seams and so I'm going to finger press this and tape this down so it doesn't come loose. I guess I still have my tape over here. And we are gonna, after this, we'll um, tear open our um, zipper pull as well. I don't like to do that right now. You can do it now if you want, but it does make the zipper a little bit looser inside. So I'm gonna pull that lining out of the way. I'm gonna pull up my tape on this end. the sides and then I'm going to move my zipper pull over and normally if I'm using two D rings I like to um, just put the zipper pull against that D ring so it doesn't move but in this case I only have one on the side so I'm going to tape the zipper pull down so it doesn't jingle jangle around and get stuck somewhere I don't want it while we're stitching okay now we're going to stitch um, our first exterior seam along the bottom and it's going to hold our exterior together and this will end up being the place where we turn our bag and I did bring the seam um, inside a little bit um, that's what I have to do so that we don't see the quilting from the back on the um, seams of the bag I feel like this is such an awkward angle oops see it got stuck on my D-ring. I'm glad that happened. I don't know if you guys saw that, but it got stuck on my D-ring because it didn't lift my presser foot up. And look, my D-ring flipped over. I did not show you to do that. I am not going to resume this bag though, because that little bump it just did is enough to have put the hoop off kilter. So I'm at step 12. I'm turning my machine off. I'm turning it back on. It's gonna ask me if I wanna resume my pattern. I'm gonna say no. I like when sometimes these accidents happen because I, you get to learn from it. So it's gonna ask if I wanna resume. I'm gonna say no. And I'm gonna load up my file. Oops, after I put my drive, my flash drive back in. I'm gonna load up my file and I'm gonna fast forward to that step that I was on. In this case, um, it was nine or 10. No, wait, was it 11? 11, yes. So 11 was the one 
the bottom of the bag that we just finished. So I moved my D-ring back so it's in the way. And now we should be um, reset so that we can go ahead and resume. And you'll be able to tell when we put the hoop back in there. So take the time to do that because otherwise you're going to be off kilter. Um, can't be sh for sure. I mean, it might have stitched okay, but we don't know that for sure. I'm going to remove the tape from the lining here. Since this is already tacked down, we don't need to worry about it moving. Okay, so to move the or to remove this zipper um, stabilizer, I just like to get my presser or my seam ripper in here so that I can see it. And that's the nice thing about the poly mesh. You can actually see it underneath. And then poke it through to the other side. Make sure you don't go into your lining. Steer it there. And then I like to go ahead and on this side, do the same thing. So I'm going to get it inside there so I can see the blade. And then just slice it down here. Um, either the ball up or the ball down, it doesn't really matter on this side. When you're ripping out seams, you should have your ball down. But in this case, we're just tearing the material. And I'm doing the same thing over here. I did the same thing I just... Um, cut across. Now sometimes this getting this side started is a little hard and you might have to use your scissors but the same thing you just kind of go ahead and get that started and then slice it down. And I'll show you the ball down method. Hold on to the stabilizer so that you have some tension and then just glide your seam ripper right on down. And there all done now we can go ahead and fold our lining down and we want to take this down really well because this is where it could go wrong i don't know how i have some bobbin stuff there Ooh. so i like to pull this tautly this side's already done just to have a nice tight lining Okay, and this is what I was talking about earlier. If you want to put some double stick tape along here, then when you go to um, fold the bag laying down, you can reach in and pull that out. Okay, make sure your lining didn't come undone. And we're gonna do the final step. So we make sure our D-ring was out of the way again. And this is gonna go and create the seams on the sides. And there will be a little bit of carry stitch towards the uh, bottom, which is just um, some dummy stitches to help me navigate the um, hoop on the frame so that it doesn't, um, see right here, this is just some carry stitches. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm looking at the back of it. This looks wider because the back is stitched out wider than the, the, the top. That's to help just to make sure that you're not trying to go all the way across the um, hoop. The seamer machines have a hard time moving all the way across like that. All right, we have a step 13, we're going to skip that. That's just to prevent our, our sewing machine from realigning. Always look on the back and make sure everything is neat. You'll see here's the opening that we left to um, turn the bag. So everything looks neat. So we can go ahead and I'm going to move my hoop down to the home position and get it out of my way. And now we can remove all the tape and we can take the bag off. If you did somehow mess up the lining, then you could go ahead and rip those stitches out. Don't take it out of the hoop and then redo that step. So that's why it's really important that you check the back of the bat, back of the hoop before you continue on with pulling off the hoop. Okay. Lots of tape, but that's what helps make a good bag. Things are not as likely to come loose and you're not gonna get as frustrated. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and, oops, I missed a piece. 
I'm going to trim away the poly mesh first because there's a lot of excess there that I can reuse for stabilizing other projects. So I'm just going to roughly trim that away. I never throw this stuff away. You could even sew this together on your sewing machine. And for something like this, the bag, it would work perfect. Um, I don't recommend doing that for snap tabs, though, where you need to um, remove this stabilizer. But in the bags, it works perfect. I might actually do that, do a Frankenstein and sew a whole bunch of pieces together. But I find I actually usually just use it to reinforce stitches. I kind of wish I could have taken the whole day off. I really needed another break. This project is killing me. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and cut. I'm going to trim from the back. I normally trim from the front, but it looks really confusing here with all these other seams because we did stitch the um, exterior um, wider than the back. I mean the back exterior. So I'm going to go ahead and trim it from the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a notch here. The notch just helps when you turn the bag inside out, closing it, that notch helps a little bit to um, give you some extra material to work with. And then I'm gonna trim a quarter inch all the way around. And do this over a trash can if you can, not over your sewing machine, because you don't wanna get these little threads into your sewing machine. I'm trying to be careful so you can't see me offline. Oh, I just cut my D-ring. Sorry about that. You'll see it in other videos. Don't cut your D-ring strap connector that thin. This will be fine on just this little bag, but I usually fold this back and leave an extra quarter inch. I'm sorry about that. I You can see that in my other videos, so. Do not cut into your zipper tape. I'm trimming the top because I have that extra vinyl, but don't cut into your zipper tape. And the same thing here if you had um, the D-ring straps. See, I'm so used to having them on the top. Most of the bags I do are on the top. And then here. And then you can throw, I don't think there's anything salvageable in that. So um, you can throw that away. Then um, what you wanna do is, I got this, um, I don't wanna cut that so thin. I'm just gonna use my seam ripper and pull these case stitches out um, so that we can, that seam will open up inside the bag. Now I'd like to use these scissors to do the notching. So just notch off the corner. Can you see that? Just notching off that corner and then I go in here I think you can see what I'm doing and just do some tiny notches oh that's where the that's not gonna work that's where the d-ring was yeah that's really thick there so I won't be able to notch it but just do a few notches every inch or so because there's a slight curve here and if you want to have a nice see that slight curve in your bag then you need to take out some of this material and that's what the notching does when i'm working with cotton i don't like to take the seam allowance in more than a quarter of an inch you see even doing the notching we're getting really close to that seam and i don't want my seam my lining to come and tear apart inside so the same thing over here i'm going to go ahead and notch oh that's where the seam is at so i might not be able to notch right there I get the big scissors out and just notch it out a little bit. Don't cut into your, so err on the side of not cutting into it. Up here we can go ahead and cut um, the corner, but don't cut your zipper tape. So there's my zipper tape. I'm just gonna pull away the cotton and then on this side, I'll pull the, cot, the vinyl away and don't cut your zipper tape away. I don't think I'll be able to trim this one too much because I got all that extra from the original. But there we go. Now we only need our lining to be a tab in our lining. So you can fold your lining down and then trim across here to remove the rest of the um, 
batting. If you see noticeable areas of the um, foam, you can go ahead and trim those out. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get in there and trim that foam out though. I got a pretty good job there with the original. And there we go. So now we're ready to turn it right side out. So I initially, um, I like to turn my bag so that the, um, um, inside is totally turned out first and then I turn it to the right side. So it's, it's not, um, it's not the hardest thing in the world, but it is kind of difficult because there's a lot of thickness here with the foam. So I, I like to get one corner first and you can use the, um, uh, hemostats. That's what I use on a lot of my bags, but I found with the foam, it's not, it won't get enough grip. So get that first corner worked out through there. Try not to tear the opening of your seat, your, the, t the stitching on your birthing hole. That's what this is also called a birthing hole. Um, because then it's harder to stitch it up when you're all done, but it's not the end of the world if you do cut into those stitches. So just work the bag through gently and just take your time. It'll take you a couple minutes to do this right, but why rush through? So while I'm turning this, um, once I get the first corner through, I, I find that the second corner comes through much easier. Um, while I'm doing this, what I like to use for turning, closing my bags, mo nobody's going to turn your bag right side out again. So you don't need to get in there and do some fancy blind stitching to close that, that bag. What I like to do is, because the lining stays inside the bag, it's attached. Um, I like to just use um, Fabri-Tac, it's by Beacon, and I glue it. I was using double stick tape, so if you watch some of my video earlier videos, you'll see I use double stick tape. Whoop, whoop, sorry about that. There, I am pushing on the thing again. And see, I'm straining these stitches right there, so I need to be more careful. I was using double stick tape, but what I found is on the ridge, it left a ridge on the bag that was discernible on the outside. It was thick and like, like it was just discernible to me. You could see there was like a little ridge there where the bag didn't didn't open up nicely. So I started using the fabric tack. I like it much better. It stays soft and pliable and you don't get that ridge. But you can use double stick tape, um, glue, or just stitch it on your, um, with a blind stitch. It's not a big hole. Okay, so now we got most of the bag out. I'm gonna push the corners out. I find I get a better result if I do try and get the bag totally right side wrong side out, I should say, first. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna hurry because I need to put a glare screen on my computer for work, yeah. All right, there we go. So it's mostly out. Now go ahead and reach in and push your zipper open the rest of the way, and then you can turn it to the right side. Just work with it. Sometimes you have to pull the zipper to get it, the most momentum going and then push it. This one's giving me a hard time. So I mean by you need to try and pull it closed and then it'll get the momentum. If you can't get it open anymore, then just go ahead and turn it. I don't know why this one's wanting to stick on me here. I think it's because the pat, there it goes. The pat and vinyl is kind of wants to stick together as it is. And then just start doing the same thing and working your bag to the right side. And yes, the way I do it, you have to turn the bag twice because I wait to close it until I'm all the way done. But the reason I do that is if I close that bag already and I sealed that birthing hole closed and I get this flipped open and I realize that there's a mistake, like I thought I lined it up well and then I find I really didn't and I wanna redo that, the bag is already closed and that makes it all the more difficult to fix any mistakes. So I wait until it's all done and that the bag looks good on the outside before I do that. And I can tell I didn't actually line mine up very well because I can see this line here. So that's, I'm not gonna redo mine, but that's just something you have to worry about. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep perking it. And now this is the time when getting the hemostats does come in handy. So I like to take the rounded edge of them and 
push in and it helps push out the curves. I don't know how I did that wrong. I think I must have, um, when I went to release the tape, um, I must have got something off kilter then when I was fixing the thing, the, when I hit the D-ring. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and, well, I'm hitting, that. sorry, there I am again. I got my rounded edge in here and I'm just pushing out the edges. So you won't be able to see a seam in yours because you're not gonna hit the D-ring and get off kilter like I did. I should have stopped then and um, repositioned it. Usually if I just restart the file, but I think I must have actually bumped the vinyl and didn't realize it when I was flipping the hoop around. Okay, so this is what it's gonna look like. And then, oh, I keep hitting that thing with my chest. Then just go ahead and push this out. And this cream vinyl is a lot harder than the one I was working with yesterday. So, and then for this over here, the zipper pole, I like to put the hemostats right under the zipper pole and just pop it up. If you don't have rounded hemostats, then you can use um, a chopstick or something like that. All right, and then over here, if you have to um, do the same thing, um, usually this comes up by itself fine. But if you have to, push the bulk of that in and then pull up on the zipper tape. So I have the hemostat right there on that edge. Push that down and pull up. And then you can go ahead and close this. And there you go. Cute little, this is the five by seven. Um, I don't think this will fit a large phone, but it may fit those smaller phones out there. There we go. How cute is that? Thanks, everybody.